Thanks, Brendan. Boomer Schooner here in Norman, Oklahoma. Another beautiful night for college football inside the Big 12. Some 82,000 strong expected tonight for the 103rd consecutive sellout. And here come the Sooners. Number 15, Oklahoma and Iowa State getting set to tangle here in Norman. And hi, everybody. Glad you could join us alongside a former NFL and college quarterback, Jay Walker. I am Roy Philpott. And Jay, here inside the Big 12, as many as four different teams expected to make a run towards the college football playoff including potentially the Sooners. And yeah, Oklahoma, one of four teams from the Big 12 Conference that are nationally ranked, but they're trying to get in the top four so they can qualify for the college football playoff, a conference that feels like they were snubbed a season ago. If Oklahoma can beat Baylor, beat TCU, and beat Oklahoma State, the Sooners have a really good chance at landing one of those valued four playoff spots. It would be one of the best resumes in the country and for Oklahoma. They've been playing a different brand of football these last three weeks since an October 10th loss to Texas. Scoring over 60 points per game, they've been on fire. And it was a Texas game in which they were sacked six times. Since that game, they've really shored up their offensive line. They've got two freshman tackles that have grown up before our eyes. They've really started to muscle teams around added the running game for balance so they're not only finesse and passing they have a power rushing attack right now the sooner offense is playing their best football of the season iowa state of course led by paul rhodes in his seventh season in search of that upset and a lot of times the cyclones can be sneaky in games like this and right now they want to be sneaky because they're coming in here with a lot of confidence after a fantastic performance versus texas when they shut out texas and the offense put points on the board they're trying to pull off the upset something they haven't done in quite a long time They've got the confidence factor needed to do it. Nearly 82,000 expected tonight. A gorgeous evening here in Norman. Now glad you could join us. Oklahoma won the coin toss and deferred. And the Cyclones back deep to receive this opening kickoff. And underway in Norman. It rolls through the back of the end zone for the touchback. First and 10 coming up for Iowa State. And JR, first look at Joel Lanning making just his second start overall and his first start on the road tonight. Yeah, and how about Joel Lanning? Your first start comes against Texas at home. Then you go on the road to take on Oklahoma, one of the most physical defenses you'll face in the conference. But they like what he brings to the table with the ability to run the football. That's why they made the change to get the active mobile quarterback involved in the offense. Iowa State has been electric since he took over the starting quarterback position, going all the way back to the second half of the Baylor game. And on first down, it's landing from the shotgun. And a handoff to a star freshman tailback, and he goes nowhere, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Mike Warren, one of the best freshman running backs in the country. They're going to try and get him many carries as they can often. He's got fantastic vision to the outside. Warren, 46 yards away from 1,000 in his first season in Ames. And a quick pitch and a quick catch out of bounds. Short of first down yardage. The stop made by Dakota Austin as we take a look at our impact players. For Iowa State, it all starts with Mike Warren. He's got to be active in the rushing attack and have breakout runs. William Johnson plays that nickel back for OU, gives him the ability to not have to change personnel. They need him to be active around the football, particularly against the run. Cyclones 42% on third down this season. Lanning's going to throw it. Pocket collapses, and there he goes. And this is why he's in the starting lineup. He's got the first down with an easy run. The ability to stay calm under fire is a great job by the defensive line of Oklahoma getting pressure with just a four-man rush. But great recognition by Joel Lanning to see a running lane and to pick up the first down. Gain of nine yards on third down and two, and the drive continues. Iowa State three and five coming in, but shut out Texas a week ago. 
Confusion on the handoff and landing. Makes something out of nothing. A gain of five yards on first down. A stop made by Jordan Evans. Great football play there. Miscommunication between landing and Warner. Warner in the backfield. The quarterback shows poise, calls his own number, minimizes the negative effect, and ends up picking up positive yardage. Landing just a sophomore. Took over the starting quarterback position after a change at offensive coordinator last week. The pump fake. And landing lasso from behind short of the first down. That was Charles Tapper, the co-defensive player of the week inside the Big 12. Tapper coming off a three-sack performance in the game versus Kansas. Great recognition on the screen. Didn't fool anybody. No place to go with the football for landing. Jay, if you go back and watch the game against Texas by the Sooners, this is what UT did. Mobility at the quarterback position. Sometimes it can be enough, will it be, tonight? The dump off. Warren's got it. And he's got some real estate. A nice move and shoved out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Ahmad Thomas finally brought him out of bounds, but it's a first down. And they caught OU bringing pressure to the outside. How do you defend yourself against a blitz? A screen pass to the outside with an out level running back in space, doing a good job, making the catch, and picking up positive yardage for the first down. Gain of 19 yards as Joshua Thomas checks in for the first time. Warren to the sideline. From the 32, opening possession of the ball game. Thomas the handoff, and a short pickup. Oklahoma so aggressive from a strong safety spot. That was Stephen Parker. And they're really trying to do run blitzes from the outside. Stephen Parker coming off the edge, great pressure. Really trying to bottle in Mike Warren and close down those running lanes. Warren checks back in, a native of Oklahoma, although he moved around a lot as a youngster, his family in the military. Second down and long, backside pressure, he floats it deep. And overshoots his intended target. That was Eric Stryker applying the pressure from the backside, Jay. And you have to know where Eric Stryker lines up every time you're in a passing situation. Top half of your screen comes around with a nice speed room, Lanning just gets rid of that football in the nick of time, what would have been another sack for Stryker. Native of Florida, his speed tremendous in this conference. Third down, nine yards to go. And landing with time. Out in the flats, caught. Short of first down yardage down to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of seven brought down by Austin. That's the tight end, Ben Boson, just his fourth catch of the year. Good protection by the offensive line. Able to double-team striker to keep him off of the quarterback. Thrown underneath the coverage, allowing the tight end to make a play. Just came up three yards short. The drive bogs down. And a 43-yard field goal attempt. Set to be tried off the foot of Cole Netton. 8 of 13 this season. And he splits the upright, so Iowa State strikes first. Paul Rhodes excited. And an optimistic opening possession for the underdog Cyclones. When you're trying to pull off something that your program's not used to doing, that's winning here at Oklahoma. Points come in a premium. You take them any way you can. He gets the three points. And he's pumped up. Let's go. Now, remember, Iowa State hasn't won in Norman since 1990, 25 years ago, and just one win since 1961 in the series. And consider the fact that they pitched a shutout last week versus Texas, so they've got a 3-0 lead. The way their defense is playing, things are looking up. And this is a start you have to have when you're trying to do something that's rare for your program. Take the ball, pick up a couple first downs, get some points on the board, to let them know that you can move the football. That's an impressive opening drive by the Cyclones. And the all-time series between these two dominated by Boomer Sooner. In fact, Bob Stoops 10-0 lifetime against the Cyclones. Here's the head coach in Norman. Chris Francis on for the kickoff. 
and a wobbler. Bounces across the goal line. First and 10 for Oklahoma, upcoming from its 25. Baker Mayfield, the transfer from Texas Tech, the 2013 Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year for freshmen. And Mayfield has fantastic numbers. We'll take a look at his numbers. You see what he can do throwing the football. More athletic than you realize. And he's one of those guys, I think, in that second tier for the Heisman Trophy. You need to start knowing the name. Baker Mayfield, he's legit. And has been on fire these last three weeks. Oklahoma, the number seven scoring offense in the country, over 46 per contest. And a reverse. The flea flicker, Mayfield down the field. Wide open, and it's caught. Off to the races, and a touchdown for the Sooners. From 75 yards out, it's Dimitri Flowers, the tight end H-back. Razzle dazzle, a lot of moving parts on that play there. You come out with an over-aggressive defense, you use their aggression against them. Flowers wide open for the touchdown score. Take that for a response by the Sooners to the Cyclones field goal. Austin Siebert on for the extra point. Remains perfect this season. And our new score, Oklahoma, the 7-3 lead. Nearly five minutes into the first quarter. Seven to three, our score back in Norman. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott on hand, and a fast start for the Sooners offense. Nearly 82,000 packed inside Memorial Stadium. And some razzle dazzle to begin this when the flea flicker to the H back. Play, I'm sure that they've run all year long in practice. Fantastic job by the offense. Plenty of distractions taking place, but. You really have to like how they use the aggression. You knew Iowa State was going to come in here defensively pumped up, trying to hit somebody. They didn't know who to hit. They got hit for a big play in the form of a touchdown. Siebert underneath his kickoff from the three. And brought down crossing the 20 up to the 22-yard line, a return of 19. Take me back to this touchdown, Jeff. Don't look at all the distractions. What you need to follow is Dimitri Flowers here from his fullback, H-back position. He's going to serve as if he's a blocker here, settle, then take off untouched up the sideline. If you look at all the distractions, you're going to lose sight of it. He's in the middle of the play. He's looking for somebody to block. No, he's a receiver. He's open, wide open. Great design by offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley to realize some of the tendency that the Iowa State defense and to take advantage of it. Lincoln Riley, one of the young, innovative offensive coordinators in the country, came to Norman from East Carolina. After an impressive opening possession, here's Iowa State, handoff Warren. will push the pile ahead towards four yards, brought down by Matt Romar. You see since that loss to Texas, 60 points per contest. The offense found their rhythm, and I really am impressed the fact that they've started to protect their quarterback. You can't do a long developing play like they just did unless you're solid up front, and that's why the offensive production for Oklahoma is continuing to climb. And called one down two yards behind where he finished on the turf. And he gets the call again, stacked up after a short pickup. Well, Jay, you were really impressed with IS, Iowa State's length on the offensive line. They're not big, and that's going to be something to watch in the trenches. But when you have an offensive line where everybody's six, 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 seven, they've got long arms. So when you can get your arms on somebody and push them out of the way, that running lane becomes even better and easier for the running back to identify. The vision of Mike Warren is great, but the height of the line for Iowa State really gives defenses problems if they can get their hands on you. Two out of three on third down tonight. And this is where Lanning is dangerous as a runner. Buys some time across his body. A dangerous throw, and it's incomplete. 
Lanning did everything he could to extend that play, and really nothing doing. Great job defensively by OU. Yeah, that was a great job by the secondary of Oklahoma. One of the things that Mike Stoops does on defense, they play man-to-man -man coverage. You don't see a lot of teams willing to play man-to-man -man coverage, but when you've got the athletes in the secondary that Oklahoma has, they have that luxury. He's trying to find Jawan Wesley in that last sequence. Colin Downing on to punt this one away. From his 15, turns it over beautifully. And Shepard, no fair catch. Dangerous return. Give him two, it'll be first and 10 for the Sooners when we come back. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Explore the orchard. The legendary Billy Sims, also quarterback Jason White. Two out of the five Heisman Trophy winners back in Norman. Jay Walker and Roy Philpott on hand. And speaking of the Heisman Trophy, Baker Mayfield's numbers through eight games eerily similar to that of Jason White and also Sam Bradford. I mean, everybody knows Fournette's probably the leader right now, but watch out. There's a group of guys that are bundling up together, and I think Mayfield is one of those guys that should be mentioned in that category. Fantastic numbers. The touchdown interception ratio is phenomenal. 26 and 4. He's making good decisions with the football. Touchdown on the flea flicker just a few minutes ago. One play, 75 yards. Samaje P. Ryan off to the races and a first down carry nets 15. Brought down by Willie Harvey. Oklahoma has a stable of running backs, and I think for this football game, P. Ryan is going to be the guy that they go to. The power running. They want to try and establish control of the line of scrimmage. He's the power back in the backfield. 5'10, 230 pounds of man. A near side run. P. Ryan keeps it alive, spins his way to another first down. Gain of 16 yards in the Oklahoma offense on fire. Lincoln Riley said that's been one criticism this year to try to find that rhythm early. They're doing it tonight. Yeah, they start off with the flea flicker because they wanted to get it going early, and now they can go to the power football game with Pete Ross. The toss this time. And the Texas native bullies his way across the 35, brought down by Brian Peavy. And when you watch Piron, you see the numbers, but look at the frame. 5'10", 230 pounds, solid, but the ability to change directions in the open field. So he's not only a guy that can make you miss, but we know he thrives on contact. After a gain of seven, Oklahoma will slow down the tempo momentarily. Here's Sterling Shepard. Quick pitch and catch, short of first down yardage. Brian Mills, the tackle. Shepard, a fiery competitor. Bob Stoops told us yesterday, all the years he's coached, this guy may be at the top of his list. Intensity. Just a guy that gets after it in the Sooners team. On third down, P. Ryan tries to get to the edge, and he can't get there. Sandwiched between two Iowa State defenders. It was Jordan Harris with the initial contact. Fourth down and short, what do you do? I think you go for it. In this situation, you want to run the football. You want to establish you have control of the line of scrimmage. Field goal attempt here is no gimme. I think you, instead of running the football on the edge, I think you look to get the ball to some of the playmakers outside. Empty backfield, and now here comes P. Ryan. And he'll flank Mayfield. And down the field, it is incomplete. So Iowa State's defense, a big time stop on the second possession of the ball game, and it was PV in coverage. Mayfield had nowhere to go that time. Late decision by Baker Mayfield. He was open early in the route, right when he got the first down yardage. It was a quick sprint out read, and I think Mayfield decided to pump. And you saw the adjustment made, but I thought he was open for a split second early for first down yardage. <laughs> Tell me what you think. You're going to see the, the quick sprint out. If you get rid of the football now, that's open. That's a first down. If you put it on his chest, he can make that catch. Gets a little bit aggressive. Ball thrown behind him. First down for Iowa State. So landing back on the field. And the officials will come in to stop the play. 
It's one thing Lincoln Riley told us yesterday as well. Baker Mayfield, sometimes he'll try to take too many risks instead of taking what's there. Please reset the play but he clock. Also said seconds. That's what he likes about Baker Mayfield because the moment you're saying, don't do that, don't do that, he does something spectacular with the football. And that's a gunslinger mentality. Eddie Shelton leads the Big 12 officiating crew tonight. More than halfway through a fast-moving first quarter. And Ryan, the deep handoff, he goes nowhere. They're all purpose back. He'll lose five on the play. The tackle by Dakota Austin, Jay. Coming from his cornerback position, great recognition runs underneath the attempted block by Boson. Athletes all over the field for the Sooner defense. They do not have to change personnel because of the athleticism they have in their secondary and linebacker core. Joshua Thomas checks back in. Another freshman running back. Out in the flats looking for Ryan, and it's incomplete. And Lanning short-armed that one. The strength of Joel Lanning is when he sets his feet, he's extremely accurate. But when he throws off his back foot, the coaches said he loses accuracy by 10 to 15 percent. That's a throw you have to make on the college football level to a wide open receiver in the flat. Number two making his first road start, just his second start overall tonight. Third down and long. And a timeout will be called by the Sooners. Timeout on the field as we step aside. 6-13 remaining in our first quarter here in Norman. ESPN College Football. Stream every game live at home or on the go. Download the Watch ESPN app or visit watchespn.com. A fantastic way to keep an eye on all the action, especially a Saturday like today and what we've seen. Oklahoma State, TCU, all the potential upsets. Clemson, Florida State. Mike Warren back in at running back. Good look there at Alan Lazard, six foot five inch target on the outside. If you can get a jump ball situation with him, he may be able to make a play for you in this type of situation. 42% on third down this season, landing with time and an open receiver, and it's picked off. Intercepted back at the 45 by Austin. Flag on the field, and Austin brought down at the 26. First turnover of the contest and a big one at that. A return of 33 yards and landing off target here ever so slightly. Off target, and it's the wrong type of pass. He went with the firm pass in the hole where if you throw this ball over the top, potential for a huge play. There is no foul for illegal blocking the bye. Oklahoma ball, first down. Lazar runs a good route, gets behind the cornerback. Once he gets behind it, throw it upfield. That's an open wide receiver with an opportunity for a big play, but a great job of getting back in the play by Dakota Austin, then becoming a running back after he made the interception. But it was a good job by Lazar getting behind the cornerback with no help. Just another poor throw that we've seen from Joel Lanning. He hasn't been sharp early in this football game. Austin also in this contest starting tonight. In place of Zach Sanchez, injured cornerback for the Sooners. Now on first down, Mayfield checks back in. And down the field, break it open. It is caught for the touchdown. D.D. Westbrook to grab. And just like that, the Sooners trying to take control early. Simple post route by D.D. Westbrook, but Baker Mayfield all kinds of time in the pocket, able to go through his progressions and throw a strike for the touchdown. Second touchdown toss of the evening for Baker Mayfield. And Siebert's extra point is up. It is good. And our new score with 5.53 remaining in the first quarter, it's 14 to 3. Yeah, and a nice post route. Give him a wiggle at the top of the route, then separate from the defender. Ball thrown in stride. That's a perfect pass. And look at the pocket. Time to go through his progressions. Doesn't get touched on a ball thrown 20 yards down the field. He'll pick you apart. Oh, yeah. Big time player, big time personality, and the leader for this OU team. And that's the fist pump from a quarterback that's seen the game slowly. 
he's in his own right now and this offense is continuing to improve on a weekly basis. And the Sooners with an early statement against a team in Iowa State coming off its most impressive victory of the season. Just one week ago Cyclone shut out Texas a team that beat OU. Westbrook another scoring grab his third of the year so many weapons for Oklahoma's offense and now a very important drive coming up for the Cyclones Jack it's, it's make or break time for them. this game can get away from them quickly right now they had an impressive drive to start the football game I think they need to go back to getting the football in the hands of Mike Warren in the open field Siebert's kickoff hammered through the end zone for the touchback now for our championship drive update brought to you by Dr. Pepper See what's going on in the Big 12, the Thursday night contest between the Bears and the Wildcats. Baylor remains undefeated. And Oklahoma State, perhaps pulling off the shocker today, right? The upset against TCU. Yeah, not too far away from here. And Oklahoma State, under the radar, the lowest ranked out of all the teams ranked in the Big 12 that we've talked about, but rapidly moving up the polls. Impressive performance in their victory at home over TCU. Joel Lanning in his second career start out of the pistol on first down. Ryan in motion and nowhere to run a loss of four on the play. Mike Warren tackled in the backfield. Bond, the tackle for loss, a backup cornerback. You can see what the game plan is for Oklahoma defensively. The guys coming off the edge are going to force Warren to run in between the tackles. So if he's going to break a run, it's going to have to be on a cutback against the grain. On second and 14, landing. A quick toss, and it's out of bounds. Looking for Quentin Bundridge. Another throw that should have been completed. One on one coverage, simple five yard out route. The cornerback was giving him the throw underneath, but Landing not able to find his rhythm yet throwing the football in this game. Iowa State went right down the field on its opening possession. An interception in its second timeout. Now third and long here. Backside pressure, down he goes, Charles Tapper. His fourth sack of the season and a big one right there. The front four for Oklahoma is having their way with the offensive line for Iowa State. And this is just one-on-one, -on -one, gets him in a bull rush, locates the quarterback for the big tackle. We mentioned earlier, Charles Tapper starting to play football at a very high level after three sacks last week, gets another sack here. And he's a guy that when you talk to the coaches, they said, we need big plays out of Tapper. And I think the senior from Baltimore, Maryland, is responding well. Downing will punt this one away. Cannot turn it over this time. And a short punt. Sooners will begin their next drive in plus territory. And let's take a look at our Buick Drive recap. It started Dakota Austin, the interception, a backup quarterback making plays, Jay. Fantastic job getting back in the route after losing leverage. But look at the aggressive run. After he got the interception, became an aggressive runner, almost like a running back, really giving the offense fantastic field position. Leads to the touchdown pass to D.D. Westbrook from 27 yards out. His fourth touchdown of the season. And Baker Mayfield excited, just as he's always been this year. Quick strike offense. Whenever they go more than one play, <laughs> they don't finish off the drive. But the big play has really been giving them the advantage so far. The home run ball, and Baker Mayfield's been throwing the downfield ball beautifully so far. Cyclones need a stop after a 23 yard punt. Joe Mixon, his first carry of the contest, crosses the 35, brought down by Kawan Floyd, and a gain of seven. Nixon, a native of California, and here comes the tempo. Pressure off the edge. Play action for Mayfield. has got his man, Duran Neal. And some shake and bake into the red zone. He goes another first down. Willie Harvey, the tackle. 
get the ball to your playmakers on the outside. You're starting to see the athleticism of Oklahoma a little bit more prevalent on the OU side than it is for Iowa State. Far side handoff for Mixon, a short pickup, give him two. Luke not the stop. The tempo of an offense like this, what can it do to a defense? It wears you out and it makes you think. You're so, you're thinking so much instead of playing football, they're really keeping them on their heels. Second down and eight towards the end zone, breaking open and incomplete. Trying to find Shepard, already has six touchdowns caught this season. Jamal Wiltz in coverage. And that's a scary play if you're Iowa State. Although you avoided giving up the touchdown, Oklahoma recognized it was man-to-man -man coverage with their best wide receiver on a backup cornerback in Wiltz. Went right after him, almost came away with the touchdown. Mayfield four of six for 118 yards to start this one. And he'll change the play here with Mixon in the backfield. Six in the box for the Cyclones and Mayfield to throw with time. Takes off. Baker Mayfield. Touchdown Sooners. Now the hop, skip, and the jump, and just like that, six more on the board. America, get to know Baker Mayfield. If you fall in love with his numbers, you forget about his athleticism. Counted for all three Oklahoma touchdowns tonight. Two through the air, one on the ground. That last one from 17 yards out. And Siebert's extra point is good. 21 to three Sooners. And this is one where it's great coverage by the secondary, but Mayfield realizes there's a running lane. I can pick up the first down. That's too much room in the open field. Man-to-man -man coverage makes one guy miss and has the ability to finish off the run. Great decision. Right now, oh, something's open on the right side, takes off running, makes a guy miss, and that's a special football player. Making those type of plays on that field, and right now he seems like he's the best football player on the field. And when they start talking about you like that, you're lifting your game to the next level, and you can see why he was selected as one of the semifinalists for the Maxwell Award. Now Mayfield, a big-time video game player, was one of the first people in the city of Norman to get the newly released Halo 5 a few weeks back. That looked like a like an X, video like, game yeah, play like right you there. Push the X button at the end. You get that extra little burst of energy to get into the end zone. Now the Sooners in business. And Baker Mayfield, one of the big reasons why. Gorgeous night for college football and a fantastic start for the Red Hot Sooners. Two yards deep, the kneel down. If the Sooners can hold on tonight. Let's take a look at what's coming up. The remaining schedule, a very eventful month of November. Art Browse and company will travel down to Waco to visit the Baylor Bears. TCU lost today to Oklahoma State coming up on November 21st here at Memorial Stadium and then Bedlam at Oklahoma State, the Red Hot Cowboys are forced to be reckoned with this season. And I think that game just took on added importance after the impressive performance by the Cowboys today over TCU. But, but as a football team, you want to control your own destiny. And when you talk to Coach Stoops, he says, we realize if we win the remaining games on our schedule, then we can emerge in the national prominence in terms of getting in the playoff. But it all starts with winning each game on a weekly basis. Thomas in at running back. And the near side handoff goes nowhere. Jordan Thomas, the initial contact. And Oklahoma's defense pinning its ears back right now, waiting for the run. They are, and they're refusing to give up outside contain, so they're always bringing pressure from the outside. If Mike Warren's going to run the football, it has to be between the tackles, and unfortunately for Iowa State, that's where Matthew Romar and Matt Diamond make a living just stuffing the run. Cyclones with just 42 yards of total offense so far. On second down, in and out of the hands. Wow. That's the tight end, Ben Boson. And Jordan Evans, the pressure. Another one of those throws where it's a wide open wide receiver. And you start to wonder, is, is the atmosphere a little bit too much for Joel Landing right now? He had the home game against Texas. 
he doesn't look settled. And they're trying to call plays where they're not a complicated passing scheme, but he's continuing to miss open wide receivers. Cyclones two out of six on third down, and a big one coming up right here. They'll set up the tunnel screen. Nowhere to run. Brought down crossing the 25. Well short of first down yardage. It was Will Johnson, the nickelback. And Oklahoma plays too much man-to-man -to -man coverage to really do the wide receiver bubble screens. They're seeing everything right now. And Iowa State offensively has no rhythm whatsoever. A clinic on display by the Sooner defense. Now talking with Bob Stoops and his coaching staff yesterday, there was a twinkle in their eye in the zone these last three ball games, and certainly that trend continuing so far tonight. Shepard back deep to receive this downing punt, and in traffic, calls for the fair catch. And don't forget, coming up at noon on Sunday, the ACC championship game, women's soccer, Florida State versus Virginia. Followed by Texas A&M versus Florida, the SEC championship game right here on ESPNU. And now another opportunity for Baker Mayfield. And it's almost like you have the whole playbook at your disposal. I mean, they had P. Ryan running the football well. The offensive line is protecting well. The wide receivers are getting open. Right now, it's as if Lincoln Riley's playing video game football with his play selection. <laughs> They're making everything work. You tell me X is the button to press too, right? Quick pitch. Goes out to Neal. Crosses the 40. A gain of five yards. Jones with a stop. And something to note for Iowa State, this is the first year they've gone to a 3-4 defensive scheme. I mean, they're going with three defensive linemen and four linebackers. And they're doing that so they can have more speed on the field. But when you've got exceptional speed at the wide receiver position combined with the power rushing attack, they're not having much success. Sooners averaging almost nine yards per carry. Close to a first down here. It was second and five. Jamal Wiltz with a tackle. So many different weapons, not only at wide receiver, at quarterback, but in the backfield, Jack. And you just feel like with the way the offensive line for Oklahoma's playing, there's been no pressure on Baker Mayfield. The offensive line's controlling the line of scrimmage. Quarterback sneak, Mayfield. Only needed a couple of inches, and I believe he got there. Harvey brought him down finally with the initial surge. We'll give him the first down. Mayfield in control, running Lincoln Riley's offense so far. Under a minute to play in a fast-moving first quarter. Play action. Mayfield. Finally just tosses it out of bounds in a smart play for the junior quarterback. Once again, you saw the athleticism. Absolutely nothing there whatsoever. Iowa State did a good job of sniffing out the play. Not able to get the tackle for a loss because Mayfield able to escape, throw the ball away. He lived to fight another down on second down. See the numbers on Mayfield. Second down and 10 with plenty of time in the pocket. Finally runs free and loses the football. And Oklahoma fortunate to recover. Good job playing zone coverage and Turning your back to the defense is never a good thing if you're a ball carrier. He gets spun around, gets hit, and the ball comes out. Oklahoma fortunate to recover the fumble. Kane Seeley, the junior from Iowa, forced the fumble. They'll lose a couple. It'll bring up third down and 15. Time winding down. We'll see if the Sooners run one more play. They will. Dumps it off to Mixon. And back to the original line of scrimmage after a gain of seven. Well, the end of the cool quarter, 21 to three, our score. Over 200 yards of total offense on the board already for the Sooners.
21 to 3. As we begin the second quarter here in Norman, Jay Walker and Roy Philpott on a beautiful evening here in the Big 12 inside of Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Notice the Baker hats. I like that. It's got a nice little ring. Reminds me of back in 84 when they used to have the Heisman tie. When they're promoting sure. Ty Detmer. First punt of the contest for Oklahoma's Austin Siebert. And a fair catch at the 10. Punt of 42 yards. Speaking of Baker, how about his night so far? A highlight reel waiting to happen. And on the opening play from the offensive possession, wide open wide receiver, but he stood in there to deliver the football. But he's doing a really good job of throwing the ball downfield deep in the secondary for Iowa State taking advantage of the one on one matchups he's receiving. And I really like this. This is a dimension many people don't know about the athleticism of Baker Mayfield. He's more than just a guy with the golden right arm. He has a set of legs as well. I still think the X was the spin move. I'm thinking that's <laughs> the O with the jump. First and 10 for the Cyclones, deep in their own territory, this time from the 10. Pressure off the edge and a flag on the field. And this will cost Iowa State movement at the line. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 67, five yard penalty, remains first down. Not a good start for Jake Campos. He was beaten by Tapper a few minutes ago and gave up the sack and the penalty there. Playing left tackle against talented Charles Tapper. Then they've got Eric Stryker on the other side. Left tackle position is very valuable. He's got to step up his game tonight. And we'll back him up five, this time from the five yard line. Sooners with a five man front. And the inside handoff, Thomas. Get two of those penalty yards back with a stop by Matt Romar. Plenty of size up front for Oklahoma's defensive line. 282, 260, 291. And striker off the edge as Mike Warren checks back in after a brief hiatus. From his own end zone and brought down at the two. Matt Romar once again with the pressure and the sack. From the defensive tackle position, Romar 92 and Charles Walker 97. Bull rush up the middle, nowhere to go. And did you see the athleticism by Charles Walker to leap and leave his feet and make that one arm sack? Almost rewarded with the safety, but it's the interior lineman for Oklahoma that allows him to do so many things that a typical college defense cannot. Stout on the inside. Third down and 19 from the one and here comes the crowd. And a timeout on the field as we step aside 21 to 3 here at Norman. Number 15, Oklahoma, 21-3 lead against Iowa State. Back in Norman, Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. Third down and 19 from just outside the one-yard line for the Cyclones. After two first downs in the opening possession, none since. And more movement at the line of scrimmage. Well, a six-inch penalty. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 56 of the offense. At the, at the distance to the goal, remains third down. J.P. Filbert Jr., the guilty party that time. Those are just nerves. You've got a defensive line that senses something big is going to happen, opportunity for a sack. They've got their ears pinned back. Stryker, Romar, Diamond, Tapper. They're going to absolutely come hard and collapse his pocket. Great football names as well. From eight yards deep in his own end zone, Joel Lanning will buy some time. And the pass is incomplete. 
Pitch and catch it probably should have been made. Quentin Buntridge, the intended wide receiver. It was Austin in coverage. Make that Montgomery the intended wide out. And you have to help your quarterback out. You're coming back to the football. Quarterback is scrambling, trying to make something that out of nothing. If you're Devario Montgomery, you have to make that catch on the sideline. The fourth three and out of the contest for Iowa State. And the ever dangerous Sterling Shepard standing at his own 44. And a wobbler fielded by Shepard as he's ushered out at the 43 yard line. Well, you talk about the longest tenured coaches in the FBS, and Bob Stoops is right up there. Frank Beamer, of course, retiring at the end of this season. It's 29 years in Blacksburg. Stoops, this is year 17, Jay, and Time tremendous flies. success. <laughs> Kirk Ferentz also equaling Bob Stoops, head coach at Iowa. The Hawkeyes remain undefeated today. And Stoops, 10-0 versus the Cyclones as the head coach here at OU. The majority of those wins have been dominant. <laughs> 17 years. Where's the time gone? Man, it seems like just yesterday he was coming here to Norman, but he's had a tremendous run, and of course the national championship year will make you a legend. Another strong run for Pirine, who coughs it up. Samaje Pirine trying to gain a couple of extra yards. Lost control of the football. Levi Peters in on the hit. And a first down for Iowa State, so a much-needed turnover right there for the Cyclones defense, and a rare fumble by Pirine. Swarming to the football, that's the advantage when you have the four linebackers in the game. You have to tackle by committee, and towards the end, the ball comes loose. It's a great play by Regan Northrup, number nine, White to recover. Ball comes out, becomes a foot race, and Iowa State with the much-needed turnover to get the football back for the offense. Now, Peters had a big game last week in the sh shutout against Texas. And ripped it away right before P. Ryan could hit the turf. That's not easy to do against a big physical back like that. Solidly built. The previous play of a fumble is under further review. So they'll take it up to the booth and Jack McDonald, the replay official tonight. And remember to overturn the call in the field. It has to be indisputable video evidence. In this case, they're going to be looking at was the knee down. I'm sure the ball clearly comes out, but was the knee down? It was ruled a fumble on the field. And from that angle, they close. And Paul Rhodes explaining to our officiating crew. What he saw, and I don't think his opinion counts tonight. They're going to have to piece this together on where they were, and since there's no certain look that you can see, I don't think there's enough to say that it definitely was not a fumble. He's in the act of ripping that football out before P. Ryan hits the grass. And you see, when the shoulder hits the ground, the ball's already out, so. This fumble should stand. Well, Bob Stoops talking things over his Oklahoma offense. He's fumbled it now eight times this year. We saw more of this the first month of the season as opposed to this recent winning streak since the loss to Texas back on October 10th. And Eddie Shelton now with the call. On the field of a fumble stands. First down, Iowa State. It's got to be indisputable video evidence, so obviously that wasn't present in that sequence. And right now, offensively for Iowa State, I think they need to take a page out of the Oklahoma playbook. Oklahoma wants to run the football. And they said, well, we're going to throw the football to open up the running lane. Iowa State's been trying to run the football. Oklahoma's not allowing them to do that. Time for them to throw the football, get the ball to some of these tall wide receivers so you can open up the running lanes for your freshman running back. Wideouts, especially Alan Lazard, standing in at nearly 6'6". 
Handoff for nowhere to run, stacked up and driven backwards. No gain on the play. Dominique Alexander, the hit. They're staying in the box, and they're they're not winning the battle, taking on the defensive tackles for Oklahoma. So I think you just have to throw the football, even if you go bubble screens to your wide receiver to force them to run sideline to sideline to open up the running lanes. Landing to throw down the field, floats it. And a pass is caught at the 30-yard line. Alan Lazard, we talked about him a few minutes ago, the 6-6 frame in play there. He can be a difference maker. A difference from last season when he was a great freshman to his sophomore year, he's coming down with more of these footballs in jump ball situations. They're calling his number more. Leading receiver for the Cyclones, and that's a huge catch. Gain of 29 yards. Warren the handoff. And dances his way for a couple, brought down by Eric Stryker. Warren leads all FBS freshman running backs in rushing yards and yards per carry this season. Officially a gain of three, landing out of the shotgun. Off of play action and incomplete. Outstanding coverage, Austin trying to find his tight end, Ben Boson, once again, Jay. Trying to create some time, rolling outside of the pocket. But I still think if you're Iowa State, you do have an advantage with height with the wide receiver core. Alan Lazard, 6'5", Clinton Bundridge, 6'2", Dondre Bailey, 6'3". I think if you want to throw the football, you look for one of the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Let's see if you can get another jump ball situation and take advantage of it. Two out of eight on third down tonight. They need seven here to keep the drive alive from inside the 30. Landing. Fires a dart. End zone, and it's incomplete. Looking for Daly, and it was Stephen Parker in coverage. And the quarterback that's in a rhythm, this is a touchdown, but we know that Landing has struggled a little bit. Just missed by about a yard off the target. I'd like to see Daly maybe come back and leave his feet for that ball, but the overthrow ends up being just a long, long incompletion. But you saw Daly once again, an Iowa State wide receiver able to get behind the secondary of Oklahoma. Netting on for the 45 yard field goal attempt in the middle of the field and some confusion for the Cyclones. A timeout will be used. And with one on the field, we'll step aside. 21 to 3 here in Norman. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back in Norman, and during that last timeout. Some frustration being displayed by the Cyclones offensive line. That's Wendell Tyese shoved into the starting lineup tonight after the injury to Daniel Burton, the original starting right guard, and something that can rear its ugly head, trailing 21 to 3. Netten back on for the 45 yard field goal attempt. One for one tonight, his long of the season, 47, the high snap. Brought in beautifully, and the field goal splits the uprights. 21 to 6, our new score, 11.35 remaining in our first half, and you see the last six drives after a fairly successful opening possession, Jay. Nothing really doing until then. Yeah. Well, celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Sol State makes contributions to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. You got this kind of bickering going on the same team. That could be an issue. I mean, tension's riding high, and this is a team that's coming off an historic victory last week. It's been a different story here tonight. You know, you like the effort, you, don't, you want the intensity to be there, but you're talking about two fifth-year seniors that have been around the program. 
Let's hope they can just put that behind them and focus on the job at hand. And meanwhile, field goals really not going to get the job done tonight against one of the top offenses in the country that's in the zone the last three games. And Oklahoma's on fire throwing the football, an offense that's averaging 45 points a game. And they're looking to improve upon that. Talk about clicking at the right time of year. This Oklahoma Sooner offense is coming up to the meat of their schedule. And they're playing football at a very high level. From the five. And short of the 25, it'll be first and 10 for the Sooners. Now for a Big Ten update, let's send you to Brendan. Good evening, Roy. Thank you very much. Let's go to Lincoln, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers taking on Michigan State. Nebraska with a 10-3 lead in the second quarter, but Connor Cook hits McGarrett Kings Jr. He makes a move and finds the end zone. The Spartans tie it at 10 with 11 and a half minutes. Thank you, Brendan. A big game for Michigan State. Obviously, they're all big in the month of November, especially when you're undefeated. And when you're one of the teams that's outside the top four, every game counts, and you have to start wondering about style points. But think about Michigan State. That defense is going to carry them a long way. Mayfield back on the field. And with time, throws a dart. It's caught crossing the 20. And a short pickup on first down to Joe Mixon, a gain of six. You have to be certain that Lincoln Riley told the Sooners that ball security is the key right now. Our playbook is open to us, but secure the football. And out of the Wildcat, a little laundry on the field, and a false start will back up the Sooners five yards. False start on number 54 of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. First penalty of the contest against Oklahoma, so a clean start for the Sooners tonight. Casatati, the guilty party. And on second and long, Mayfield thought about it. And that will lose yards. Ushered out of bounds short of the 20 yard line. J.D. Wagoner. Redshirt sophomore from right down the road in Dallas. Good recognition by the Cyclone defense, not fooled by the misdirection, forcing Baker Mayfield to eat it. No place to go with the football. It's a big play for Iowa State. Second tackle for loss this season for Wagoner. Big third down coming up. Iowa State in search of another stop. Sooners need 12. Crossing pattern. Needed to get close to the 28. And Sterling Shepard's going to get there. A nice pitch and catch and a great run. And the awareness by Sterling Shepard. They realized that he was going to have to catch the ball short and run for the yardage of the first down. Going to come all the way across the formation. Accurate throw to hit him in stride. And look at him. Look at the sideline. He knows the awareness and stretches to pick up yardage to almost get the first down. It's close. Second catch of the ball game, and it looks like he's going to come up just short. The Iowa State defense holds. Siebert on to punt this one away. And a fair catch made at the 33, a punt of 39. Well, the Cyclones got to be better than this, don't they? Um, and think about it, on that first drive, the quarterback position landing was two of three. Since then, three of 11 throwing the football, and you just have to have more productivity than this. Scoring field goals is okay, but there are too many punts in between, and you just don't have the feeling that Iowa State has found their rhythm offensively of what they're going to do to attack the Sooners. I still think it comes back to them throwing the football and the wide receiver core making some big plays for a quarterback that does not have his accuracy yet in this ball game. So here comes Joel Lanning, 5 of 14 in the passing department, just 63 yards to start this one tonight. Cyclones need some points on this possession. Under 10 to play in the first half. Pocket collapses. Lanning gets rid of it. And a short gain on first down actually will net five and a half yards. Ahmad Thomas in coverage. I don't 
thing I've noticed about Oklahoma, they probably play more man coverage than 95% of the teams out there in America. And if you see it, it's man to man coverage across the board. Come on, come on. There goes Mike Warren, a little shake and a bake. And the Juke gets the first down after the reception by Carson Epps. Stephen Parker, the hit. And that's what can happen when you have the defense thinking about the threat of the pass. Then some of those linebackers that have been coming up for run support, they've got a drop in coverage. And you can run the football a little bit more effectively. And the drive continues for the Cyclone. So OU shows pressure. And a false start will back up Iowa State five yards. False start on number 56 of the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Well, the one thing offensive coordinator Todd Sturdy told us this week we have to avoid third down and long it means efficiency on first and second down. We haven't seen a lot. Third down so far tonight for Iowa State they need to be more productive on plays like this one right here. Bring them pressure. Landing the keeper with the stiff arm and a nice move into OU territory. And a first down for the Cyclones brought down by Dakota Austin. That was a great recognition by Joel Landing, realizing that the Sooners continue to bring blitzes from the outside linebacker position, held onto the football split second longer, pulled it from the stomach, found running lane outside. Now in plus territory. Four wide receiver formation. Warren picks up the pressure. And a dangerous throws caught for a short pickup. Well, Todd Sturdy, of course, the new offensive play caller, has been on the job for about 10 days after Paul Rhodes parted ways with Mark Mangino. Differences in philosophy. New starting quarterback, new play caller now, Jay. I think what they wanted to do was utilize the mobile quarterbacks a little bit more. The previous starter was Sam Richardson. Hesitant to run the football. You get more mobility when you bring Joel Lanning in as your starting quarterback. Not often you see that kind of transition midseason. Near side run on that three. They get four yards, third down and short coming up after the stop by Diamond. And when you talk about Joel Lanning start, he's just a sophomore. We talked about Mike Warren, he's just a freshman. Alan Lazar, just a sophomore. At the skill positions, they're youthful. So they have a foundation in place. Big play right here for the Cyclones. Third down and one. Play action. And the pass bobbled. Lazard, the intended target, couldn't bring it in. Will Johnson had a chance to maybe take that one the other way. Yeah, this is great recognition. Trying to run a bubble screen. Balls hanging in the air and almost intercepted. Good job changing direction, but not able to come up with the turnover. All right, fourth and short, you got to go for it where you are on the field right now, right? I think so. You're, you're too far out for a field goal. This is where you draw up your best running play. Maybe move the tight end across the formation to seal the edge. Trailing by 15. Hand off. Needed to cross the 35, get down to the 34. And I don't think he got there. It was Charles Walker. And the OU defense stands tall. The defensive tackles have really dominated this game, and on fourth down, they come up huge. 21 to 6, first and 10 for the Sooners when we come back. Twenty-one to six, our score. You look at the Oklahoma drives chart, and Lincoln Riley told us yesterday, Jay, that he wanted to get this team, this game, off to a fast start. Three TDs early, he's done that. Seth, the only thing that worries him is when the offense gets off to slow starts. They came out here with the game plan saying we must start fast, energy level high. I think they accomplished the goal. Impressive on the first three of their first four drives. And first play tonight from scrimmage for OU. A flea flicker went 75 yards for a touchdown. Back to live action, a dump off over the middle, up to the 40-yard line. Kawan Floyd with the stop. A reception made by Dimitri Flowers, who scored from 75 yards out earlier. We'll go tempo. The tunnel screen, close to first down yardage. The 
Ron Neal the grab. And Jamal Wilkes made the tackle, but not before another OU first down. Not an easy throw by Baker Mayfield. Quick release, throwing that ball out there accurately. But the great ones make the tough throws look easy. Deep handoff here. Mixon into Iowa State territory. Talk to me about arm strength for a second. When we watch Baker Mayfield, do you like what you see in that department? Oh, he can really spin it. Watching him in the pregame, he was putting on a clinic. He can make all the throws. He needed to be a big-time quarterback. Remember, started his career at Texas Tech. There's play action. Mayfield will buy some time down the field. A low pass. And it is ruled a catch by Neal. Deron Neal, Brian Peavy in coverage. Gain of 10 yards and a nice play and a nice grab. And that's another one of those arm strength throws. He was actually running backwards when he had to throw that football off the back leg. I'm going to take the another look at this one. The completed catch is under further review. See if he gets his hands underneath it. Now the cradle, the arm, does the ball move? That's a good job. I think he got his hands underneath there and secured the football. There's a really good look. It's got to be indisputable video yeah. evidence to overturn. And the ball is not moving. So once he clinched the ball close to his body, we didn't see much movement from the football. Jack McDonald, our replay official tonight with our Big 12 crew. Talking things over with the referee, Eddie Shelton. And that play should stand. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Oklahoma. So a gain of 10 yards and a nice throw, Jack. Now, this is nothing that's going to show up in the stat sheet. Impressive, but watch him as he escapes. He's running backwards, cannot step into the throw, but has the arm strength to throw it 20 yards downfield while he's running away from pressure. That's how you know that arm strength is not a question with Baker Mayfield. And coming from a former quarterback, you would know, and certainly on display there. 30-second catch of the season for Deron Neal in his fourth tonight. Four wide, Mayfield steps up in the pocket. Keeps the play alive to the edge. And sent out of bounds at the 35. Regan Northrop finally able to bring him down. Another quality pickup on first down. Give him six on the play. Second down and four coming up. Here comes more tempo from the Sooners. Mayfield, the play fake, and the pass comes in low. It's incomplete, looking for Jarvis Baxter. Juan Floyd in coverage. And one of the things still surprising, I'm a little bit surprised they're not pounding the football a little bit. They've run the ball with success. We haven't seen a running play get stopped for a tackle behind the line of scrimmage yet. And one of the things, when you talk about the air raid, offensive attack, they tend to get pass happy. All the schools do it. TCU does it, Baylor, Texas Tech. But when you've got the power running backs that Oklahoma has at your disposal, I can see him pound the football a little bit more on first and second down. You got the 230-pound hammer in Samaj P. Ryan. And off to a fast start earlier on third down. The quick toss. Neal again, his fifth reception. Short of the red zone at the 21, but the drive continues. Northrop with the tackle after a gain of 13. There's so much speed on the field. Iowa State. Their defensive secondary, they're giving five-yard cushions across the board. Mayfield just finding his best matchup and letting it fly. Handoff this time. No gain on the play. Stacked up at the line. J.D. Wagoner leading the charge. And Mixon unable to make anything out of that play. Now Baker Mayfield bringing the swagger back to this Oklahoma offense. Looking for a big play here, his team up by 15. Now under five to play in the first half with time towards the end zone, back corner and incomplete. Looking for the flag, Wilts in coverage. And trying to find his big wideout, Mark Andrews. 
Seemed like Jamal Wilts did a pretty good job trying to run him off. There's some contact, but not enough to warrant a flag. Yeah, good no call that time. Mayfield 12 of 17 passing, nearly 180 yards and a couple of scores. Take a look at Sterling Shepard in the slot right there on the hash mark. Most dangerous man on the field right now. And a timeout called by the shooters. Timeout. Oklahoma. One remaining, 4.53 to go here in our first half. Back in Norman, Sooners with a 15-point lead. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott on hand. Big 12 action here on ESPNU. Glad you could join us in a fast start for the Sooners tonight in search of that eighth win of the season in Oklahoma. An impressive November's got a chance to make some noise, and you see Bob Stoops' his record at home, 94-8. and eight. Dominant. Third down and 10, under five to play in the first half. And the Cyclone showing pressure. Six-man front, they'll back out of it. Mayfield with time down the field and incomplete. Looking for Baxter, nothing doing. Outstanding coverage, Wilts once again. Good job by Iowa State. Bend but not break defense. Not giving up a touchdown, and they stop giving up the big plays. That's going to force Oklahoma to go for a field goal. Siebert back on the field, 11 of 13 this season. He's been one of the top freshman kickers in the country. Also handles the punting duties, a 39-yarder. Made his first 10 attempts this year on the way. And hooking off the upright, it is no good. So the Iowa State defense holds. And Siebert a bit unlucky on that sequence. Seems like it's going in, and right when it gets to the top, gust of wind, blows it to the left, doink. And I think he's excited about it. Iowa State, one win against the Sooners since 1961. It occurred 25 years ago. You can just get to halftime, and this game is close, and give yourself a chance in the second half. Cyclones would probably take that. And see what they can do as Lanning's back on the field from the 21. A quick toss. And ushered out of bounds finally as Quentin Bundridge, gain of seven on the play. You know, senior out of Palmetto, Florida, Bundridge made a nice move. As much man-to-man -man coverage as Oklahoma likes to play, if you can get the ball to a guy like Bundridge or Lazar out on the perimeter, they can make somebody miss and rip off a big play in a hurry. Big drive potentially to close down this first half. Boson in motion. And Warren stacked up, driven backwards once again. Jordan Evans. Jordan Evans is a guy they were happy to have back. Very rangy and athletic. He's a the guy they call their traditional run stuffer linebacker. 6'2", 240 pounds, a junior from right here in Norman, Oklahoma. He comes up with big hits time and time again. Lost his shoe. Frank Shannon checks in, the backup linebacker. Senior from Dallas. Big third down play. Iowa State just 2 of 10 on third down tonight. And Lanning in traffic fires it incomplete. He's tied in again the intended receiver Bonds in coverage. And the punt team back on the field for Iowa State. The fifth three and out of this first half for the Cyclones offense. Francis hits this one off the side of his foot. It'll 
take an Iowa State bounce out of bounds. First and 10 coming up for the Sooners. And for another Big 12 update, we check in once again with Brendan Fitzgerald. Okay, Roy, thanks very much. We'll check in on the Red River Rivals. Texas hosting Kansas on the Longhorn Network tonight. Gerard Hurd to John Burt for the 84-yard touchdown. Tyrone Swoops added a touchdown as well. 17-0 Longhorns in the first quarter. Brandon, thank you. Charlie Strong in search of another victory in conference play, Jay. And they needed that for their offense after getting shut out by this Iowa State squad last week. Texas seems as if they've got their offense in gear. P. Ryan back in. It's the carry. Across the 30 and a gain of four. Brought down by Floyd. Juan Floyd's had an active first two quarters tonight. From a strong safety position, a junior college transfer from Los Angeles, California, makes a living around the line of scrimmage. Big hit on P. Ryan. And Wally Burnham told us this week he'll undress you if he gets an opportunity. Play action Mayfield. Backside pressure. Down he goes. Dale Pearson, the sack mamba for Iowa State. Seven and a half sacks this season now for Mr. Pearson. He's the high energy, high motor guy for the defensive line for Iowa State. And I will tell you, if he did not get to the quarterback, it was open for a touchdown. And see Baker Mayfield's holding that left arm a little gingerly with his non throwing hand. Check on that third down and 14. Penalty flag on the field. Ball start. On number 75 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Drew Samia. third down. The guilty party will cost him five. Watch Mayfield's hand here. Right there, maybe took a helmet to the see the elbow, the wrist. But fortunately for Oklahoma, it's the non throwing arm, but just hope it's. Just a little stinger. And the loss all the way back. The 17 yard line on third down. Mayfield. Plenty of time. Surveys. And throws a missile out of bounds. It is incomplete. Trying to find Westbrook. Tribune in coverage. The best cover corner for the Cyclones defense. That'll force another Oklahoma punt. So Iowa State starting to build some momentum here. They've stopped giving up the deep the deep ball. And that's really been their Achilles heel. Oklahoma in the first quarter was gouging them for huge chunks of yardage on big plays down the field. Iowa State has found a way to keep the receivers in front of them and slow down the Sooner offense. Siebert back on to punt. And brought down at the 47 yard line. Cyclones will have good field position as we check in once again with Brendan Fitzgerald. Thanks, Roy. Coming up at halftime, Charles Arbuckle joins me. We talk about Oklahoma State looking mighty impressive in their big win against TCU. Speaking of big wins, Clemson over Florida State. Highlights of that as well. And Arkansas, wait until you see how the Razorbacks took down Old Miss. See you in a few minutes. Big time win for Brett Bielema. You talk about big wins. Oklahoma State, what happened to Trevon Boykin tonight? That time of year, we're in a national televised game spotlights on and going on the road and winning the Stillman's tough you know it's gonna be a shootout and the offense didn't come up with the productivity needed to win that football game Mayfield being tended to on the sidelines on first down landing flush from the pocket floats it downfield and it is caught inside the 35 yard line shoved out of bounds Quentin Bundridge the reception and a gain of 19 yards and a first down. And that's what you can do versus man to man coverage where their back is turned to the quarterback. Buy a little time on the outside and throw it up high. Here comes the tempo play action again pass incomplete drop. Tell me what you see right here with another jump ball. When you have a, a tall wide receiver core use them put the ball up in the air where they can make plays and elevate and come down with it and Quentin Bundridge is a fifth year senior with speed and size. So what you don't want to do with tall wide receivers is throw it low. And the wide receiver core that averages 6-3, keep the ball high, one-on-one, -on -one, jump ball, see if they can come down with it and help out a struggling quarterback. Maybe Lanning also starting to find a little bit of a rhythm here. On second down, pass is high, incomplete. We spoke too soon. Bundridge again 
with Ahmad Thomas in coverage. And, and that's the window. I mean, that's the window. You have to make that throw. And we've seen Baker Mayfield make those throws on a pretty consistent basis. But if you're going to squeeze that ball in there against an active secondary, you have to improve your accuracy, and that's the throw you have to make in order to get the respect of the defense. 125 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma off to the fast start. Iowa State with a score here can get right back in it. The Cyclones hanging around. Big third down here. All day to throw, landing, backside pressure finally arrives into the end zone. It is incomplete. Jordan Wade able to get to landing at the last possible second. And fourth down coming up and perhaps decision time now for Paul Rhodes, who's 0 for 1 on fourth down tonight. Timeout. Iowa State. Third Trying to find his receiver, Jawan Wesley. Timeout on the field as we step aside. Sooners by 15. Back in Norman, fourth down and 10. 119 to play in our first half and a field goal attempt coming up for the Cyclones. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott here with you inside of Memorial Stadium. A 51-yard attempt for Cole Netton, who's got a strong leg as long this season, 47. And with plenty of distance, Netton is true. The third field goal of the first half in Iowa State hanging around here in Norman. And I think that's the key. They're just hanging around. Oklahoma has not put them away here in the first half. And for Iowa State, it has to be a little moral victory to be within striking range at halftime, a team you haven't beaten in 20-plus years. Now you talk about the Big 12 race and so many teams in contention. 31-24, Baylor won back on Thursday. And the upset of the day, perhaps, Oklahoma State by 20 over Trevon Boykin and TCU. Nobody saw that coming. You see what UT's doing to Texas so far, and West Virginia holds on against Texas Tech. But a big story, the Cowboys. Oklahoma State made the top 25, and they're continuing to climb. And you have to think they're going to be a top 10 ball club after that impressive victory. And I think we started off the, the, the broadcast talking about the fact that in the Big 12, it's all going to be decided on the field. All these teams are going to play each other. Oklahoma has to take on Baylor. They still have to play TCU. So it's going to come be a very interesting finish in the conference. Well, and the big question is what happens if you have a conference champion that has one loss again, like what we saw last year? And TCU and Baylor left on the outside looking in. Francis with the kickoff. Fielded inside the one. A little stutter step, nowhere to run, and brought down short of the 15 yard line. And you want to talk about playing it out on the field, the gauntlet. Look at the schedules <laughs> Baylor, TCU, Oklahoma State, and the D Sooners. And here's how you know it's, it's, it's big. You can't circle just one game and say this is going to be the one that's going to determine it. Normally, this time of year, you're thinking, hey, one game's going to be the one, but why don't we do this? <laughs> That's the gauntlet. <laughs> That's going to determine. <laughs> the whole gauntlet's going to be determined there. But November 28th will be special for Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Bedlam. No better rivalry in college football today. Mayfield back on the field. Good news for Sooners fans. After his hand was tended to a few minutes ago. A quick toss. Out of the 15 and a short pickup. Give him two. And you really have to give credit to Iowa State. I mean, they are, whatever they're doing defensively, the pre-snap read from Baker Mayfield is forcing him to throw the football quick. And they're getting rid of the ball. They're coming up and tackling at the line of scrimmage. They've really stopped giving up the big play. Trips to the top of the screen. Handoff P. Ryan dances his way across the 20. Fumbled earlier in this quarter up to the 21 and brought down by Willie Harvey after a gain of four. Starting to see the defensive line match the intensity of Oklahoma as well. No longer getting pushed around. They're starting to play more stout. The front three defensive ends, particularly Dale Pearson, number 45. So on third down, Oklahoma content to let this clock run down. A big halftime report coming up. There have been two huge upsets in college football today. 
including one with ramifications here inside the Big 12. So that'll do it in a fast-moving first half in Norman. 21-9, our halftime score. The Sooners with the lead. Baker Mayfield hot early. Now let's send you back to the studio with Brendan Fitzgerald and Charles Arbuckle with a halftime report. Back in Norman, our halftime score, 21 to 9. Second half kickoff coming up moments from now. The Razzle Dazzle will start this one, the Fleet Flicker. The early touchdown for the Sooners. And hi, everybody. Once again, Roy Philpott and Jay Walker on hand. We saw the Razzle Dazzle offensively, but the defense was dominant in the first two quarters, Jay. They've done a fantastic job of keeping Iowa State guessing in their coverages, in their penetration. It's been a real tough first half for Iowa State to get it going offensively. They've done it a number of ways. You see right away establishing and not letting any outside perimeter runs. This defense is playing well. That's their 11th interception in the last six games. And the defensive line, I think, has really been the key. Constant control of the line of scrimmage, getting pressure on the quarterback, making it very tough for Joel Lanning. And I think coming in, they had a key. They were not going to allow the freshman sensation, Mike Warren, to run the football. They absolutely stuffed the run game for Iowa State. Dominating performance by the defensive line. And they've managed to keep the Cyclones out of the end zone. Just 136 total yards for the Cyclones in the first half. 17 on the ground for Mike Warren, who was just 46 away from reaching 1,000 coming into tonight. It all starts with the big guys on the inside. And what a luxury that Mike Stoops and, and the defensive coordinator have when they can just sick the dogs after them and stop the run with just four defensive linemen. Well, with all that being said, we still have a ball game, 21 to nine, plenty of time left. The Oklahoma offense heats up again. From the two, and the near side run brought down at the 20. As we take a look at tonight's first half stats brought to you by Pennzoil. Baker Mayfield, a fast start. You see 181 passing yards on the board, a couple of scores. Joel Lanning, his counterpart, trying to find some kind of rhythm. Hasn't happened just yet. And don't forget about Iowa State. 2 and 15 when rushing for 100 yards or less. Tonight, just 36, Jay. It's been tough, and I think if you're Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, you reset your game plan that you had coming into the game in the second half. Quick start. We saw. Baker Mayfield slow down a little bit offensively. They need to reestablish that high energy level on offense. Four wide receivers set. P. Ryan in the backfield. Mayfield happy feet. And down he goes at the 15-yard line. He'll lose six on the play. And the Cyclones defense led by Jordan Harris with a sack. A fast start here in the third quarter. Good job by the secondary. No place for Baker Mayfield to go with the football. All the red jerseys were covered. They're continuing to play great secondary defense, forcing Mayfield to throw short. Pressure off the edge, handoff Pirine, far side. And sandwiched after he gained two, it was Jordan Harris once again. Do you, you get the sense of urgency, the energy level for Iowa State's really picked up on defense? To start off the game, they were shocked and then Instead of absorbing the blow, they started to deliver the blow towards the latter part of the first half. A big third down coming up. 13 to go for the Sooners. Pass is caught, 34. And Santa bounds crossing the 35-yard line. D.D. Westbrook in a gain of 18. The drive continues. Great job schematically getting one-on-one -on -one with D.D. Westbrook versus the safety. Juan Floyd in open space. Sooners were shut out in that second quarter after a fast 21 in the first. P. Ryan again, the ball carrier. And he'll gain four. It'll make it second and six. Call it a long seven. Mayfield tempo. Play action. And a pump fake. Buys some time. First down, Jarvis Baxter. Now into Iowa State territory after a gain of 11. Brought down by Levi Peters. This is an instance where head coach Bob Stoops wants the offense to get going. Up-tempo offense. They'll roll the pocket this time. Sterling Shepard. Down to the 41-yard line. Peavy the stop. A gain of eight. 
they are calling plays at a nitro pace right now. Get to the line of scrimmage, get the ball snapped. Second down and a short two in Mayfield. Will adjust the play call. He has this ability in Lincoln Riley's offense. And the toss, this play worked well in the first half. Pirine pummels his way ahead to the 31. Ryan Peavy absorbed that hit from Pirine, a gain of 10. And welcome to Big 12 football. More tempo for the Sooners. Mayfield, Neal, another first down in the red zone this time. So, Jay, we see Oklahoma score on the first possession of the first half with a flea flicker trying to do the same thing here to start the third. And they found a good rhythm throwing the football to intermediate passes. Tunnel screen, Neal. And brought down by Peavy after a short pickup. And Oklahoma gets it going. This fast break tempo is phenomenal. And it's all predicated off of Sterling Shepard. What is the defense going to do to him? And then they can make whatever calls they want for their adjustment. Iowa State shut out Texas a week ago. Gave up 21 first quarter points tonight. It's P. Ryan shifts. A play fake. Mayfield all day. Great job by the Cyclone secondary. And Mayfield shoved out of bounds. And he'll lose a couple of yards on the play. That was Thomas applying the backside pressure. And once again, take a look at the secondary. All the white jerseys playing zone, locking up man on man. There's nobody open. The wide receiver just thinks he's open. There's a safety behind him. No place to go with the football for Baker Mayfield. The Iowa State secondary has made some great adjustments, and you're starting to see the zone coverage cause trouble for Oklahoma's offense with their big play capabilities. The 11th play of the drive coming up. It's third down and 11. Max protect Mayfield flings it down the field and it's incomplete trying to find Westbrook. Nigel Tribune in coverage. Fourth down coming up. And Jay you get the sense Oklahoma in search maybe of some kind of spark. 21 to 9 lead in a field goal. We'll see what happens in this third quarter. It's been a bend but don't break defensive effort for Iowa State. And this will be a 37 yard attempt off the foot of Austin Siebert. It went off the upright earlier on the way and splits the uprights this time. Well, the Sooners tack on three. 15 point advantage. 11.07 remaining in our third quarter. And it's that time of year. Don't forget about college basketball on ESPNU next Friday. It starts at 7 o'clock. Siena versus Duke, the defending national champion Blue Devils. LSU McNeese State coming up at 9. Of course, Ben Simmons, the highly touted recruit for the Tigers. A lot of excitement down there on the bayou this year in basketball, Jay. What about Duke being ranked number 5 defending national champs? Well, I guess they lost Quinn Cook and Winslow, but seems like college basketball starts coming start saying it's that coach K time of year indeed busy night in the Big 12 this evening a fun evening so far for the Sooners fans some 82,000 strong 103rd consecutive sellout here in Norman yeah, what a fantastic environment it is here in Norman First trip down here, and you can see they're crazy about their Sooners here. And here inside of Memorial Stadium, an expansion project underway as well, totaling over $175 million. I'll tell you more about that as we go through. So the field goal to open this second half for the Sooners. hammered through the end zone as we check back in for another Big 12 update with Brendan Fitzgerald. All right, thanks very much, Roy. This is Nebraska trailing Michigan State by four. Tommy Armstrong Jr. goes to Alonzo Moore. Nebraska would score in the next play. The Huskers have a 20-17 third quarter lead. 
And also Memphis and Navy tied at 17 apiece. Keenan Reynolds to DeBrandon Sanders, the midshipman on top of the Tigers in the third quarter. Back to you. Interesting developments in the Big Ten. And also Keenan Reynolds getting the job done for the Naval Academy, Jay. Oh, nice double move. Landing down the field, caught inside of Oklahoma territory. Lazard again with the catch and a gain of 27. And it was a great route by Lazard. Double move, throw it up high. Six foot five inch target. Do not underthrow it. Allow him to go up and make a play. Biggest improvement of the game for Alan Lazard from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Coming down with the jump balls. You see the numbers on landing starting to improve. Lazard also. An impressive first two quarters now in the books. Hand off to Warren. And a short pickup on first down. The stop made by Romar. Now Paul Rhodes and company still in this football game. Year seven in Ames. He's got an opportunity tonight. If they can figure out a way to punch it in the end zone to finish off a drive, this becomes a contest quickly. Nine yards to go. The wheel routes, and it's picked off at the 35-yard line. The second interception of the ball game, Dakota no. Austin, and they're going to say it's incomplete. You must complete the act. So once you make the catch, you must complete the act all the way to the ground. That ball is coming out. What a good job by the wide receiver, not allowing him to come away with that interception. Trevor Ryan. The all-purpose back, standout returner. Robbing Austin of his second pick of the ball game. Third down. Landing keeps it alive. Backside pressure. Down he goes. Charles Tapper, his second sack of the night. And this is one where the sophomore quarterback has to realize you're taking on the University of Oklahoma. Once you make one miss, you better believe there's somebody else coming. Charles Tapper, they needed him to step up. He's had a good ball game so far tonight, his second sack. A loss of seven on the play, Iowa State. And Colin Downing set to punt this one away once again. Shepard awaits at his 15. And signals the fair catch. He makes it inside the 20. Timeout on the field as we step aside. The Sooners by 15. Back in Norman, 24 to 9, our score. Nearly midway through the third quarter. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. You see the starts in the first and second half, respectively, tonight, Jay. And it's that flea flicker that went for a touchdown and a nice 12 play drive, ending in three moments ago. Here comes the Baker back. Joined by Samaj P. Ryan in the backfield. Iowa State, despite trailing by two scores, still hanging around, still in this one. Hanging around, particularly on the defensive side. They've really stopped giving up the big play, keeping everything in front and making good tackles in the open field. P. Ryan near side crosses the 20. Gain of three brought down by Floyd. Now, Kawan Floyd battled a hamstring injury earlier this year. Also a broken hand still out there giving it his all for the Cyclones. Fake to Mixon. Pass caught by Westbrook. Tries to make a move. Ushered out of bounds short of the 40 by Nigel Tribune and a gain of 16. D.D. Westbrook's done a good job being that secondary receiver. You know that Sterling Shepard's going to get all the attention. D.D. Westbrook's done a good job beating one-on-one -on -one coverage, making some grabs today. The play fake. Neal makes the catch at the 40. Stood up at the 43. And a trio of defenders sent him out of bounds, including Brian Peavy after a gain of seven. And Oklahoma trying to find some sparks here. And they're doing a good job taking what the defense has given them. Obviously, Sterling Shepard's getting a lot of attention, double coverage, so they're going to where they get single re single receiver coverage. And that's where Shepard doing a good job with Westbrook. On second down, Mixon. 
with some real estate driven backwards up to the 50 yard line. That's good enough for a first down. Levi Peters the hit. And now the Sooners backing off of that tempo. Should be pointed out we haven't had a touchdown scored since the first quarter. After a quick 21 on the board by Oklahoma. And the out pattern. It is caught for another first down. As a running back, you're taught to finish the run. But what a textbook form tackle by Levi Peters from Iowa State. Dallas Todd made that last reception. Here goes Mayfield. Showing you some speed, gets to the edge, into the red zone, and shoved out of bounds. Nigel Tribune with the stop, but after a gain of 25. Did you see the top end speed by Mayfield as well? He outrun, went, outran one of the safeties from Iowa State. His athleticism is underrated. That was also the quarterback, Wilts. He beat to the edge. Mayfield's got some jets once he gets it going. From the 18, Mayfield again. Late flag on the play, two on the field, and a face mask likely coming up. And Mayfield's been known to talk some trash. He's bringing the swagger back to this OU Personal offense. Foul. Face mask on number two of the defense. After this is to the goal. Automatic first down. You've got a quarterback that can move and he's been running all night. Uh, that's clear. Clear face mask trying to make the tackle from behind. Good job of securing the football by Mayfield. Unfortunate no injury occurred on that play. It's Jordan Harris, the middle linebacker for the Cyclones. First and goal coming up for the Sooners. And a six man front. Handoff. P. Ryan touchdown. From eight yards out, Oklahoma. It's first touchdown since the first quarter. Siebert on for the extra points. I send you back to the studio for an LSU Alabama update. Brendan. Roy, thank you very much. Alabama already had a 3 0 lead when Derrick Henry breaks off 40 yards right here. He wouldn't score, but Alabama would punch it in shortly after. 10 0 tied lead in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Ohio State is at home and taking on Minnesota. Scoreless in the second quarter until Mitch Leidner gets picked. Von Bell returns it for a touchdown. 7 0 Buckeyes. Back to you. A quick start for where Ohio State and also the Crimson Tide. So we take a look at that last drive by the Sooners. And it got going with Baker Mayfield calling his own number, getting to the outside. And look at the athleticism, able to get to the edge and outrun the cornerback. Takes a hit at the end of the run. When your quarterback's running, it opens up the running lane for your running backs. And you see Perrine in the end zone easily. Really impressed with the freshman tackles that we talked about earlier. That right side, that was... Drew Samia clearing the hole. You could have pulled a freight train through that big hole on the right side. Now, P. Ryan now with 75 yards on the ground. You saw that eight play, 82 yard drive for the Sooners. And a big time answer with a team maybe looking for a spark to start this third quarter. From the two. And across the 20 up to the 23. Well, the top 10, you look at what's happened so far today. Clemson, number one, holds on at home by 10 over Florida State after trailing early. One of the big upsets, TCU going down to Oklahoma State, and the Cowboys set to make perhaps a run in this month. Yeah, I think you'll probably see them in the top 10. Fantastic job, Oklahoma State. Clemson holding on. Tough contest between the Tigers and the Knowles. They had to pull it out late. Number one team in the land, 
Assume they'll still be number one. It's a college football playoff rankings brought to you by Allstate. Mike Warren back on the field for the Cyclones. 17 yards tonight. And lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage there. Walker, the hit. If Oklahoma said there was one person that was not going to beat them tonight, it was a gentleman wearing number two in white, Mike Warren. The defensive line has just had his number all day with outside help from the linebackers. Impressive performance by the run defense. Landing with time. Surveys and fires a strike. No, it's low and incomplete. Looking for Warren, Jordan Evans in coverage. You talk about Oklahoma defensively. They've been lights out since that loss to Texas back on October 10th. And as we mentioned at the get-go, they've run the table the month of November starting tonight. A big-time opportunity for this team maybe to make an Ohio State-type run like what we saw last year. And they're so physical, they can play with anybody. Two of 11 on third down tonight for Iowa State. Landing with time. The post corner route's caught short of the 45-yard line, but good enough for the first down. Ahmad Thomas in coverage. Lazard, another grab. Fantastic grab at the end. Leave his feet, go up high, secure the football. Know you're going to get hit. Make the catch, get one foot in bounds. Very impressed with Alan Lazard. Coming out of high school, one of the highest-ranked wide receivers in the country. Starting to go to Iowa State and becoming a big-time player. Six catches, 93 yards for Lazard. There goes Lanning, far side. And he's got another first down for the Cyclones inside of Oklahoma territory. And finally brought down by Dakota Austin. And it's because they play so much man-to-man -man coverage that quarterbacks are able to run. Because you can't guard a wide receiver and worry about where the quarterback is. So the quarterback is busy breaking contain. The defensive secondary just doesn't see him, and you're able to rip off big chunks of yardage running the football. From the 43. Push the pile ahead, crossing the 40. And all the way down to the 37-yard line, Mike Warren. And so finally, he's starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. A gain of six. Because the playmakers around him have established themselves. Lazard has established that you're going to have to give him extra attention. Landing, run the football. That allows Mike Warren to not attract so much attention. 31 to 9. Approaching five minutes to play in the third quarter. Landing with all kinds of time. Finally gets rid of it. And he's got another first down for the Cyclones. Mike Warren. Another catch. And now for tonight's game track, brought to you by Taco Bell. You see the numbers this year. Leads the country for freshman running backs in rushing yardage tonight, just 23, Jay. No, no, not to take credit away from him, but it just hasn't been there. There have been no open running lanes. The defensive line for Oklahoma has played outstanding. Landing again. Surveys. And throws a strike for a completion. Out of the 26-yard line, Devontae Bond in coverage. Reception by Montgomery. It was a good time for Iowa State to call a double move on the outside with one of the one-on-one -on -one receivers. Pump and go. Probably hit him for a touchdown. Landing now 13 of 29 through the air for a buck 59. And movement up front. Fire the snap. False start on number 56 of the offense. Five yard penalty, remain second down. Fifth penalty of the night for the Cyclones. And Filbert Jr. again, the guilty party, was called for one in the first half. Filbert's normally a backup left tackle, called into the starting lineup because of the injury to Daniel Burton. So. Offensive coordinator Todd Sturdy's had to play musical chairs with his offensive line. He took over the play calling position and wanted to focus more on third down. And also at quarterback in the run game, the swing pass. Warren near side and close to first down yardage. Let's see where they mark him out. And at the 24 yard line, he's going to be marked just short. Alexander in coverage finally made the hit. On 
Third down, the C's part. There goes Warren. Did you see a little bit of that flash that makes him special? Watch him after he gets past the initial line of scrimmage. Watch his quick move. Right here. <laughs> One step and cut. Ahmad Thomas coming up from the safety position. He tackled there. Oklahoma native, longest rush of the game, 12 yards, now with 35 tonight. And 11 short of 1,000 this season. First down, more importantly, for Iowa State. And nowhere to run this time for Mike Warren. That dime in the hit. And lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage once again. And when you see Oklahoma on defense, the numbers dictate that you should be able to run the football. Oklahoma will have six guys in the box, and you have six blockers. But they're so stout up front that it kind of goes against the traditional run count run game. Oklahoma gets away with a lot of things that a number of teams cannot. 11th play of the drive coming up. Bundridge in motion. And landing looking his direction with time. He's late with the pass, but has it caught at the six. And Lazard again with the catch, his sixth tonight after a gain of six yards. And certainly four down territory here for the Cyclones offense, trailing 31 to nine. Consider what the score dictates, but also depends on how close they get to that first down marker. You can also pick up a first down if you get it to the two yard line. Joshua Thomas checks in, has six touchdowns this season. It's a more physical running back than Warren. Picks up the blitz and the pass is incomplete. That play really doomed from the get-go, Jay. Trying to run a little quick sprint. The timing was off. See here, it looks like Paul Rhodes is going to elect to go for it rather than take the field goal. Trailing by 22, really no other choice. Two words, 6'5". Five. Find the 6'5 five inch wide receiver. Lazard at the bottom of the screen. And they'll roll the pocket the other way towards the end zone. Tipped and incomplete. Jordan Evans with the play of the day so far for the OU defense. First and 10 coming up for the Sooners when we return. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Explore the orchard. Now look at the future of Oklahoma Memorial Stadium as they enhance the south end zone in closing that section here in Norman. Increased capacity. They're also going to upgrade the suites and the locker rooms, which right now are temporary, Jay. We had a look at them yesterday, and certainly a very bright future, as always, with this program. And once they get that south end zone enclosed, you can only imagine the effect and the impact with the noise. Some of the noise that's currently leaving the stadium will echo right back on the field of play, so a hostile environment will become more hostile. But it'll be nicer. It will, certainly. More than $175 million expected this latest round of renovations for the Sooners. First and 10 now for Baker Mayfield. After a 13 play drive over five minutes long, that's no points. And P. Ryan doing his thing once again, a physical hammer. If you're gonna walk around with a five foot 10, 230 pound frame, when you get to that second level, make the defensive backs pay physical run by P. Ryan. Longest run of the night, 21 yards, and he's now at 96 this evening. The fake to P. Ryan this time. Mayfield wants it all. Sterling Shepard. Touchdown, Oklahoma.
Well, he was injured on the first play from scrimmage for the OU offense last year up in Ames. Bob Stoops called him the most fiery player he's ever been around since his tenure started here in Norman. And Shepard, a first-team Big 12 performer last year. A beast once again tonight, Jay. One of the most dynamic playmakers in college football, one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Not going to happen. Flies by him. Shepard in for the score. Sooners starting to pour it on here in the third quarter back in Norman. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, glad you could join us tonight. A minute and five seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Sooners, you feel like Jay can turn it on when they want to in this current three and perhaps now four game winning streak. I mean, they're, they're so good. And they have the power running back. They can pound the football when they want to. But I'm really impressed with their explosive play potential. The big plays. And Sterling Shepard's a huge part of that. That last play, a 74-yard scoring strike, and Baker Mayfield has had a bunch of big plays tonight. And kickoff fielded one yard deep. Tap dances his way, crossing the 20. And a quick check once again with Brendan Fitzgerald in the studio. Okay, Roy, we're going to go back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama up 10-0 here, but Brandon Harris goes to Traven Doral, 40 yards and a touchdown. LSU has added a field goal. They approach halftime. It's tied at 10 apiece. Ohio State, really slow start, but they got the pick six, and then Ezekiel Elliott trots in from 15 yards out. They're at halftime. Ohio State is up 14-0 on the Gophers. Back to you, Roy. Brandon, thank you. Cardell Jones getting the start. JT Barrett suspended, of course. Anxious to see what he can do. And perhaps another decision coming up for Urban Meyer. 38 to 9 back here at Norman. Handoff right up the gut. And with some running room goes Josh Davis. I think that Josh Thomas and brought down by Ahmad Thomas. Gain of 13 yards, so one of the longer running plays tonight for the Cyclones. And finally a hole at the line of scrimmage. They decide to go with Joshua Thomas, the more physical of the running backs. You have to think if that was Mike Warren with a hole that big in open space, it could have been a home run. Mike Warren also a freshman. Thomas hails from Buford, Georgia. Time winding down to the third quarter. Screen. Trevor Ryan far side and shoved out of bounds. Close to first down yardage. That was Dakota Austin with the tackle. And a gain of 10 yards results in another first down. With Joshua Thomas in the game, just a freshman, true freshman from Buford, Georgia. So the skill position, the foundation is here for Iowa State. They've got some pretty good players in the skill position. Offensive and defensive lines where they have to Get on board. You talk to Paul Rhodes and this staff this week. They feel like they're close. And the spin move results in another first down, a gain of 12. Charles Tapper, the tackle. Cyclones finding something here with Joshua Thomas. Going with the more physical running back. And on the final play of the third quarter, Cyclones maintain possession. And we come back. Start of the fourth quarter, 38 to 9, our score, number 15, Oklahoma, with the lead against the Cyclones. An interesting week. The force is strong with the Sooners head coach. There's Bob Stoops, Yoda on Halloween. Jay celebrating the 62 7 win against Kansas. And then, oops, earlier this week, Twitter with the bus, the statue. Nobody knew about it. It's not even covered. What a week. You know, you could probably go to like. 48 of the 50 states and folks wouldn't know who that statue was but in Oklahoma that statue was spotted on <laughs> didn't take long for social media to pick up on it and Bob Stoops it's the rest of the Oklahoma faithful surprise when that picture first surfaced and the first down handoff Thomas a carry of eight and Thomas has come in and given them a spark offensively running the football with his more physical style Holes don't have to be as large, and 
I don't know if it's a matter of Oklahoma realizing Mike Warren's in the game and changing up their defensive scheme. But Thomas has had success running the football. Just six carries, but more yards already than Mike Warren. Thomas now at 36 tonight. And he'll get the call again. Second down and short, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Evans, the initial contact. Now, the one thing you look at, Jay, you're trying to find a championship team. Can they win in different ways? And Oklahoma certainly has got the offense to do it, but the defense this last month or so, since the loss to Texas, has come on strong as well. Playing well, only giving up an average 18 points a game. And you talk to many people, they'll tell you it's the most physical defense in the Big 12. Four out of 16 on third down tonight for the Cyclones. Ryan in motion, handoff Thomas. A physical punishing run crosses the 30. And a gain of two brought down by Alexander. And that was a great second effort. The initial contact was behind the line of scrimmage, but because of the style of running the football by Joshua Thomas, able to get his momentum going and cross the line of scrimmage and pick up the first down. The drive continues. Warren back on the field for Iowa State. Oklahoma with just one loss this season. Trying to get back in the playoff conversation. Lanning. Brought down from behind. Down he goes once again. Eric Stryker. One of the best names in college football. Big sack. Stryker had 12 tackles for a loss coming into this contest. And this is just a great job. Coming off the edge from his outside linebacker position. Not giving up leverage. And once Lanning decides to change direction, Stryker turns on the jet. And makes the big strike for the sack. A loss of four on the play, second down. And the short completion down to the 30-yard line. Pass caught by the backup wide receiver, Carson Epps. Well, third down and 10, you got to think Iowa State thinking about two downs to pick up this first down, Jay. That's been their mentality the entire second half, so no need for them to change. And knowing that, you don't have to throw for the first down, meaning throw the ball beyond 10 yards downfield. You can throw the ball underneath, maybe make a guy miss pick up the first down, knowing you're going to go for it again on fourth down. Ninth play of the drive coming up from the 30. Landing bobble the snap. Here comes Stryker, the pass incomplete. Now the backside pressure too much that time for Joel Landing. And Landing could have run from a couple people, but trying to run away from this guy right here, not going to happen. Eric Stryker, watch the pursuit, gets a great jump. Landing sees him, tries to take off. Too much speed from Eric Stryker, not going to get away from him. Senior out of Tampa, Florida, what a career he has had here in Norman. And certainly a great future awaits him at the next level. And the little things show up. Did you notice how he timed the snap count? So he's already fast, but the football IQ he was able to anticipate and get a good jump on the ball. On fourth down, here's the pressure. Landing. And a floated downfield, out of bounds, incomplete. No flags on the play. First and ten coming up for OU, the 38-9 lead. Who's in? Who's in? Who's in? New Year's Eve? I'm in. I'm in. We're in. You know I'm in. Dabo Sweeney, David Shaw, Nick Saban, all those teams still alive. You take a look at the 2014, the first rankings that came out in Florida State at number two, the lone team from that list that actually made the college football playoff. So a crazy month potentially ahead for all fans. And as we mentioned before, the end of the season is what counts, and we know the committee has really placed precedence on how well teams are playing at the end of the year. Hence, the Buckeyes got in, playing well late last season after stumbling out the gates, and it's going to be interesting this season as well. Mixing the handoff. Drives his way past the 35 and finally brought down there. Now that promo, 
Dabo Sweeney seemed real confident, didn't he? I mean, was that shot today? He well, said, you, you know wonder, I'm in. <laughs> was that shot after the win <laughs> yeah. against Florida State 23-13, in case you missed it? And really the last major obstacle on Clemson's schedule this year. Tigers will get Syracuse, Wake Forest, and South Carolina before the ACC championship game, likely against UNC. Now, North Carolina had a big win today against Duke. So that could be a game to watch. Roy Philpott, Jay Walker here in Norman. Glad you could join us tonight. And the Crimson and Cream, it's another fast start. Defense has taken over. A couple of plays in the second half. A workmanlike effort so far. Total team effort. You know, you saw Sterling Shepard get in the mix with the big touchdown. Baker Mayfield's been on fire from the opening play. And Mixon. Into Iowa State territory, weaves his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. From 57 yards out. Forty four to nine extra point to come and oh you pouring it on Joe Mixon now eight carries eighty eight yards in that last score. Austin Siebert on for the PAT kick is up it is good. Big second half for Boomer Sooner tonight hey, running back by committee Joe Mixon averages six yards a carry that's going to go up after this and watch him finish the run great running backs know how to get in the end zone. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. A swagger is back in Norman, Oklahoma. 45 to 9 the score. 11 19 remaining in the game. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. Baker Mayfield really igniting this OU offense and defensively. Sooners show up once again. Had a fun conversation with Mike Stoops yesterday. And just like his brother Bob, they seem to have that look in their eye that they feel like a run could be in order this month. And I think it all stems from lessons learned. You know, when you lose the football game, that's tough. But what do you learn from? And they learn you have to protect your quarterback a little bit better. And then the defense learned a lesson about how you defend mobile quarterbacks. It's not how you start the season. It's where you finish. And right now, Oklahoma's playing very good football. From the five. And surrounded at the 15. Parker with the stop and a reminder volleyball heads your way Thursday November 12th at 11 o'clock Stanford versus Washington right here on ESPNU. More than 85,000 packing their way inside a Memorial Stadium for kickoff. Many of those have decided to head to the exits and rightfully so the 45 nine lead and it's about 45 degrees outside. Too. That's true. Temperature drop. But you know the diehard college students, they're just warming up. Now well, fun times, rightfully so. Mike Warren checks back in. Trying to eclipse the 1,000-yard mark tonight on the ground as a freshman. Brought down once again by Charles Walker. No gain on the play. The name we've called on a consistent basis, Charles Walker, Matthew Romar, Charles Tapp. I mean, they played fantastic football games on that defensive line. And then you throw in Eric Stryker. And you're talking about a defense that has dominated the line of scrimmage. From the 16, landing with time. Crossing patterns caught. One yard short of first down yardage. Carson Epps, third catch of the ball game and brought down by Jordan Thomas. Carson Epps from Jinx. Oklahoma, so he gets an opportunity to come back home and play in his home state. He, along with Mike Warren, Oklahoma natives. And Warren bounced around a lot as a youngster. His family in the military settled down in Lawton. Bob Stoops said this week that he was on their recruiting board at running back, but perhaps just past Samaj P. Ryan and also Joe Mixon. 
talented backs. The thing that's impressive about him, he played defensive end in high school up until his senior year. Those type of guys, you just call them football players. <laughs> and the flats looking for abs, nothing doing. Warren 46 yards short of a thousand coming into this game tonight. And approaching that number as time continues to tick off the clock here in the fourth quarter. Ten minutes remaining after the incompletion. Pressure off the edge. Striker. And landing somehow flings it downfield. Tell you what, using every ounce of that 230-pound frame. It's just a football feel. He's starting to understand the cadence and the snap count. He's going to come in from here and just get shot out of a cannon. Watch him time this up absolutely perfectly. Nothing you can do. You know, you almost say as a quarterback, that's on you. If you allow a defensive player to get that much momentum going towards the line of scrimmage, there's nothing that your right tackle, Jake Campos, can do when a speed rusher gets that type of jump. Got to vary the cadence at some point in time. Joshua Thomas on the field. Third down. Landing. Rockets one complete across the 30, but well short of first down yardage. And the Oklahoma defense stands tall once again. Now the Sooners will travel down to Waco, Texas for their next contest against Baylor. What a game that should be after a win here tonight, Jay. And they've got the tools to do it. You say Baylor likes to score a lot of points, but if you can't block them, you have to change your offensive game plan, and that's why it's going to be such an interesting matchup because of the physical nature of Oklahoma football. Downing hits this one off the side of his foot and floats out of bounds at the 40. 45 to 9 our score here in Norman. Fourth quarter continues next. Forty-five to nine back in Norman, Oklahoma, pouring it on here in the second half. Roy Philpi, Jay Walker here with you. And what a different Sooners program this has been. October 10th, stunning loss to Texas. Since then, an entirely different team. And it's what they've learned from the Texas game. They've learned how to defend mobile quarterbacks a little bit better. Realize they can run the football. They can throw it with anybody, but they can run the football as well. The emergence of the running game has really helped make this a dominating football team. Sooners now with possession after the Iowa State punt and a new quarterback to tell you about as Trevor Knight checks in for the first time. And a hop, skip, and a jump far side off to the races and a touchdown for Oklahoma from 55 yards out. Mark Andrews the touchdown and the Sooners strike again. Well, Trevor Knight started this game last year against the Cyclones, ran for three scores, threw for three scores, and a quick touchdown strike again for this OU offense. Austin Siebert remains perfect. At this point after touchdowns this season. And Knight's going to get the ball to Andrews and Good job getting it to him. One thing about Andrews, you talk about the athleticism of Oklahoma. This is a tight end, 6'5", 245-pound redshirt freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona, showing you he's got the size along with the athleticism. And you're a backup quarterback, you know what you come in and you say, this is easy. <laughs> well, how about this? How coincidental. First pass from Baker Mayfield tonight was touchdown flea flicker first pass from Trevor Knight was touchdown is that an offense that's in sync it certainly is that's one of the things we took away from our conversations with this OU coaching staff this week and it sounds simplistic but the play callers are in the zone this team is in the zone again after that loss to Texas everything just feels different here and keep in mind this is offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley's first year with the program so there's going to be a mesh period there which you have to understand your personnel which you truly have 
And I know we've talked about the success since the Texas loss, but I think also having an offensive coordinator that truly knows his personnel, what he's dealing with, I think that has something to do with what we're seeing right now from Oklahoma. 52 to 9 the score under nine minutes to play and the Sooners pouring it on here inside of Memorial Stadium. From the 10 Ryan dances his way across the 20. So consider this this one well in hand the Sooners remaining schedule in Waco next week perhaps a college game day appearance we'll find out shortly. TCU the following week, Horn Frogs lost to Oklahoma State this weekend, and then Bedlam to close down the month of November. And I'm just thinking right now, taking on Baylor, and Baylor without Seth Russell, but they have a freshman quarterback starting Stedham's Baylor. Been fantastic. I mean, you're see, yeah, but you want to see this defense? <laughs> it's a little bit different, so that's going to make for a very interesting matchup. First down and 10 once again for the Cyclones landing back on the field. And the screen. And then think back to those three remaining games. So Baylor's not the same team they were let's say two weeks ago because they've got a new quarterback change. TCU's not the team they were just starting today because they've been beat by Oklahoma State. But the team that you have to deal with Oklahoma State your in-state rival they're playing the best football at all of them. So Oklahoma's gonna have to earn it. When you think about what Oklahoma State has accomplished this year a lot of close wins early. That's also a team that not only is continuing to peak but has a lot of confidence in close contest. Daly made the catch good enough for the Iowa State first down. Let the countdown begin to that game but you got two more to play after this one to make that one as big as it could be. And the out pattern caught by Wesley gain of 11 pushed out by Houghton. You have to ask yourself the Big 12 schedule makers and you have this schedule so backloaded if you played some of those games perhaps earlier you could give Baylor or Oklahoma with a one loss perhaps a little bit of time to recover. The league was left out of the college football playoff a season ago. Much controversy as Baylor and TCU both had one loss. I'm anxious to see how this plays out. And, and I don't think I don't think they felt any better when the first rankings come out. You've got some undefeated teams that are left out of the top four. Actually the top five. It, it their highest ranked team was number six. So you definitely feel that the Big 12 thinks there's a chip on their shoulder. They're playing with the chip on their shoulder. And this is all going to be interesting. There's only room for four. Approaching seven minutes to play. Landing, surveys, flush. And sent out of bounds inside the 40 after a gain of 13. And Iowa State driving with an opportunity to try to make this a little more respectable. And although Oklahoma says we figured out the mobile quarterback situation, still have to work out some of the kinks. It's going to be hard because they played a the man to man coverage. So on that last run, there were defensive backs chasing wide receivers. While Lanning had already crossed the line of scrimmage and was picking up yardage. Very candid conversation this week with Mike Stoops, defensive play caller here at Norman. Pass is caught inside the 30, and he said, you know, it was a learning experience, not only for our team, but maybe more for us to make sure we have all of our bases covered. That loss to Texas was the athlete at quarterback that proved so detrimental. And so the rest of the Big 12 was watching. Iowa State thought they had a chance tonight as a result, but. And I do believe that's something they still have to work on. Right. Because we've seen Landing when he got it going, he broke off a couple nice runs, and Landing is not the athlete that Trayvon Boykin is. So with TCU coming, you know they have to place added emphasis on containing the quarterback. Mike Warren gets the first down after the catch by Wesley. because the Sooners loss came just before the halfway point of the season run the table from there on now it's going to be looked on very favorably by the committee 
And just one pole in, a lot of things can change. Remember last year, Ohio State began at 16 in the first week of the pole, won the national championship, and completed the 20. As Joshua Thomas dropped it. So a lot of football left to be played. I think that's a lesson we learned a year ago and apply it this year, especially in this conference. Who knows what's going to happen? And then you also can't forget, we know we've got the 14 playoff, but you've got some bowl game implications for some of the other bowls that aren't included in the playoff. Houston's been kind of a flavor of the month. People were wondering what would happen with Toledo had they run the table. They got knocked off and Memphis is getting beat right now by Navy. So it seems like that run's going to end. So you always wonder, you know, when you look at college football, the landscape, who's going to be that little guy? Who's that Cinderella that's going to come in and get that opportunity to play on New Year's Day? Third down and two under six to play here in Norman. Low snap for Lanning, corrals it. Floats it down the field. And out of bounds, incomplete. When you think about the teams potentially eliminated today, Memphis with a loss out of the playoff conversation, assuming Navy holds on. Ole Miss also was defeated by Arkansas by a point on a two-point play. You got to figure they're out of the mix. And then how does that affect Alabama? Because Ole Miss beat Alabama. Right. So you start looking at you know those opponents so a lot of different formulas go into this and it's a perfect formula for it. Pitch and catch Lazar shoved out of bounds. And a first down for the Cyclones you talk about a team like Florida which is being viewed as now a playoff contender. They beat Vanderbilt really on a last second field goal nine to seven at home. And they clinched a berth in the SEC championship. <laughs> and I don't know if that's how you want to clinch a berth looking as poor as they did. Nine seven to a Vanderbilt team led by head coach Derek Mason. It's really struggling. Florida offensively they, they need to get it together. 12 play of the drive towards the back corner and incomplete. Looking for Bundridge. <laughs> That's why we love this sport so much. You just never know. And perhaps another team like a Florida and Oklahoma can rise and have a chance. And I think in college football today with losses, you know, being so scrutinized so much, it's always those trap games that you fear. So you talked to Oklahoma, they thought that Texas was a trap game. And this could have been a trap game as well. But the Sooners avoided it. Same play, back in zone. And he makes a grab. Touchdown, Iowa State. Devario Montgomery, the catch. And the Cyclones reach Pater for the first time, pending a replay review. And you mentioned they went right back to the same play, took a little air off the throw, makes the catch, right foot in. That's all you need in college football. Did he get the one foot? Yes, he did. Looks and there, possession. Nice touchdown. No replay needed. Fancy footwork that time by Devario Montgomery. One of the big receivers that I thought they should have used earlier. Six feet, six inches. 52-16 our score back at Norman after this. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Let's take a look at tonight's AT&T strong performance. The defense. Oklahoma finding a way to keep the offense of Iowa State out of the end zone. They did it by stopping the run. They got the sacks. They got the turnovers and the interceptions. A great job on display by Oklahoma with their strong performance. And Dakota Austin. Backup corner shoved into starting duties because of the injury to Zach Sanchez. Approaching double digit tackles, also an interception. Nearly had another one back in the second quarter. One yard deep. And brought down short of the 20s. We check in once again with Brendan. Thanks very much, Roy. Let's check back in with Alabama LSU. Derek Henry from short yardage powering in the Crimson Tide of a 10-point lead 
in the third quarter. Meanwhile, Navy over Memphis. This is Demon Brown going in for the touchdown. This one is over. The midshipmen have handed the Tigers of Memphis their first loss of the season, 45 to 20, the final there. Well, a lot to think about. Derrick Henry, I'll ask you this. You've been very high on Leonard Fournette this year in the Heisman, as has everybody. What if Alabama and Henry win tonight? Can he get into the fold? I think so. I think he gets up. I think, you know, if it jumps off of Fournette, then I've talked about it. There's that second tier. I think Baker Mayfield will get some consideration. I think Ezekiel Elliott will start to get consideration. But the strong performances that Fournette had to start out the season, it's clearly his to lose. Derrick Henry puts up some impressive performance. He can get that talk. Preseason, I thought he was the guy. Amazing to think as well. Memphis losing at home to Navy by that margin. And Paxton Lynch, an NFL prospect, already a win over Ole Miss this year. Nothing tonight. Meanwhile, back to live action here in Norman. Trevor Knight. And the fourth team running back, Alex Ross, on the field. And the catch made with a stop by Northrop. And Oklahoma deep into his bench right now, Jays. Grant Botham makes the catch. You know, the fans here, they love this. They get to see some of these folks that they go after and recruit. Maybe not getting a lot of minutes during the heat of the moment in the game, but, you know, this is what you want to see. The guys that are developing and coming here to Norman for the first time, you can tell. You've always heard about the love of Sooner Nation for this football team, but... It is deep. Up to the 40-yard line, drive continues. A stop made by Floyd and Alex Ross. It's production off the OU bench. You played in college in the NFL, obviously. Your backups get some much-needed playing time. It does wonders for the chemistry of a team, does it not? It does, and give them something you can grade on. I mean, it's always tough just to be a practice All-American. You want to see if what you do in practice you can bring onto the field. In this case here, Knight needs some snaps, you know, especially in college football today. Everybody's learning. You really don't want to be dependent on having just one quarterback. It's great to have that stud at the quarterback position, but start getting wore down. You want to make sure you've got a number two guy that can run your offense. Trevor Knight, of course, the starter last season. We mentioned it as well against Iowa State. He threw for three touchdowns, ran for three more. And what a luxury for Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley to have both him and, of course, Baker Mayfield coming down the stretch just in case the unthinkable occurs to the starter. Well, I give a lot of credit to Bob Stoops, you know, going out getting Lincoln Riley. He realized he had been defending these wide open pass attacks, and he said, I want that offense. <laughs> and he said, I didn't necessarily want the Mike Leach offense. I wanted the How Mummy type offense and went and got Lincoln Riley. And Lincoln Riley, as we've heard, you know, around the grapevine, He's going to be a head coach pretty soon. But right now, this mesh is starting to come together. Daniel Brooks checks in for the first time. And near side shoved out of bounds in Iowa State territory. Lincoln Riley, just 32 years old. Longtime assistant at Texas Tech under Mike Leach. Ended up at East Carolina. Successful stint there for a couple of seasons. He told us yesterday, he got the phone call from Bob Stoops. It was almost surreal how it all went down. He was, what, with his father-in-law? <laughs> so he's with his father-in-law in uh, on the ride home from the airport and coming from a bowl game, and he says, hey, he's got offered a job at Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, I'm sure your father-in-law was very impressed with that. How could he not be, right? <laughs> Give you some brownie points. Here's Brooks. Some tough running between the tackles. But, but what you like about him, the demeanor. You know, when you talk to him, and you understand, you get it. His father was a football coach. He knew at an early age he wanted to be a football coach and took advantage of the situation. He was a beneficiary of going to Texas Tech, learning the Mike Leach throwing the football type system that was creative and innovative, and he mastered it. And now he's one of the hottest names in coaching in terms of up and comers. What is it, 30, 32? 32 years wow. old. What were you doing when you were 32, Roy? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> on second down, Oklahoma. Pouring it on in this second half. And Brooks 
the first down carry as time winds down. And Lincoln Riley, you can only imagine what the future holds for him, but he's got big plans this year. This offense finding its rhythm, its groove, and again, they're going to be a factor this month in the Big 12 race. They're going to need to score some points. This is an offense that came into tonight's game averaging 45 points a game. But as everybody knows, that was against some of the lesser teams in the Big 12. The big boys are coming up all in consecutive weeks. It may take more than 45 to beat Baylor and Waco next week, even with Stidham replacing the injured Seth Russell. That game has already been announced. 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC, 7 o'clock local time. Brooks caught by the shoestrings, just short of the end zone by Kawan Floyd. You got to wonder, is game day going to make a trip down to Waco next weekend? Why not? I, I promise you there'll be at least one of those three games that are coming up. You never know which one, but the place will be electric. The clock winding down. You got to think Oklahoma perhaps just content to kneel on this one. The victory formation it is. So a big win. The Sooners tonight. Jay, final thoughts on what we've seen? As good as advertised. I mean, we heard that from all the coaches, they could be the most physical team in the Big 12, and I have no reason to doubt it. Dominating defensive line, Sterling Shepard's legit, and Baker Mayfield, he's going to sneak into that Heisman discussion. Watch it. He's been red hot, and now this four-game winning streak. Final score tonight, 52-16, to Oklahoma victorious. Now let's send you back to the studio with Brendan Fitzgerald and Charles Arbuckle. So long from Norman, Oklahoma.